Hey everyone, Jamie Lee here from Bird Tricks, and today I want to go over some parrot handling 101. Some things that I see very, very common in my video consults of people doing wrong, so that if you're doing it, you can easily correct it with some tips that I'm going to show you in this video. And I'm going to use a demo bird, which is actually my Camelot macaw, Tusa, who is more so my husband's bird, but Tusa loves to work and he trains really great for me, so I'm going to demo with him because he's actually the one that I used on the, my most recent consult to show how to get handling just really, really nice and clean. So let's show. So the number one most common mistake in parrot handling is making an undesirable spot, so like a spot that you don't want your bird, such as maybe your shoulder or even your head or possibly even your arm or elbow, making that spot the most comfortable for your bird to be in. So what I mean by that is birds tend to like high spots. So as you can see right now, as I've been holding Tusa, my hand is at the highest point. My elbow's in a pretty uh, awkward position as far as if he was going to perch on it, he would be pretty uncomfortable. Same with my wrist and arm. So if I let go of his feet, he's likely to just stay on my hand because it is the most comfortable position. Also, he has learned that he gets reinforcement while on my hand. So anytime that you feel like your bird is creeping down this way or creeping over, always make sure to offer the reinforcement this way so it takes their whole body that way and kind of keeps the attention over there. Now, one of the things that I really like to do is keep my bird on my hand. <laughs> this is for just clarity and handling. If I wanna put him somewhere, um, I might have hit both of his feet, but to communicate to him that I want to put him somewhere, I let go of one foot. He knows that I would like him to go somewhere, and then I let go of the other foot, and I hang on. So same with this way. If I want him to go somewhere, I let go of one foot, and he knows what my intention is really, really clearly. A lot of handling is about clear intention and communication, just being able to communicate clearly what it is you want and what your intention is to your bird and making it really easy to understand. Because my birds are free flighted, they have learned that holding both feet means I don't want you going anywhere. Holding one foot usually means I might set you down on something, or I might pick you up, I might hand you off, just might do, do something with you. And then holding no feet usually means that, hey, I might ask you to fly, I might go on a launch, or you are just welcome to fly at any point in time and go wherever you want. So if he wants to go to the foraging tree over there with his brother, he definitely can. He was thinking about it. <laughs> um, now, one of, the, one of the main problems that I see with people is they get really uncomfortable with a bird, and especially with a bird that might have trouble balancing. And a lot of people will overcompensate for a bird that they think cannot balance. So usually birds are pretty good at this unless your bird has some sort of handicap and is unable to grip. Maybe it's missing toes, maybe it had full nails fall off at some point, um, maybe it's missing a foot. Who knows, I've kind of seen it all. So um, use this at your discretion because obviously each bird's gonna be a little bit different with actual balance problems that it does have. Most birds are perfectly fine. And what I notice with people with birds is they will handle them this way. For example, my consult the other day, she caught her bird great, but then for whatever reason, she would tilt her hand forward. And this immediately makes the bird pull back. So if you can see with Tusa's demeanor, I'm gonna try to show you again. When I pull him forward, he is immediately pushing back and resisting. It's uncomfortable for him. Um, I'm going to treat and reward him for, for letting me just do all of this <laughs> manipulation to him because he's being such a good sport about it. So what usually happens is people go forward, the bird resists, and the people end up not getting the feet anymore. So they end up not being able to hold the toes, they've completely rotated, and now they lost control of the bird and the bird is awkwardly on top of their hand. This is usually when people lift up their arm because now they're like, oh no, what's happened to my bird? What have I done? And now they have no idea how to get the bird off their arm. But what happened is they made it the most comfortable spot to be by rotating and then by lifting the rest of the arm at the same height as the hand then usually what people do is they drop the hand and the hand goes limp and the bird moves up. This is something really, really common that people tend to do. It's what I call a domino effect. So it happens from the point that you rotated your hand in the first place because a lot of people, again, they rotate, they make the 
bird feel really awkward, then they lift everything up to the same height, and then the bird just ends up wandering. And a lot of times, that's how they end up on our shoulder. Thanks, buddy. You're being so good. So that's something that you can easily recognize of yourself if you videotape your sessions. You will see what your own habits are and how they're forming and start to be able to recognize when you're most likely to do it. Also, you'll be able to enter the session going, hey, <clears throat> my downfall is A, B, and C. So I'm gonna focus on A today and just correcting A. And then you can be hyper aware of it. You could even have a buddy try to help you and point out when you tend to do it and then you can work on correcting it. Ah, I wasn't ready with my camera. <laughs> All right, so I am going to show you guys what I feel like it should look like to catch a bird. And again, whoa. I don't know if you're in the shot. Hopefully you're in the shot. This goes back to catching the bird with your hand, not catching the bird on your arm where it can slip and fall off and not feel secure, but actually catching your bird with your hand, making your hand the most convenient point for your bird to land. I'm gonna try to give myself a little extra time. Sorry, Blueberry, I didn't see you. <laughs> and really put my hand where I want to sort of land in the frame. Good. So you can see he lands right on my hand. I catch him with his feet. Not all birds are gonna be okay with you holding their feet, but ideally that is what you like to see just so that you really have that communication. I can feel exactly what he's feeling um, all through his feet. I can feel that he wants to work or if he's nervous about something all through his feet. Let's do this one. Change it up a little bit. What a good boy. What a good boy. Good job. So for example, he doesn't really like flying back to the tree and I can feel that in his feet. I can feel that right now. So he's resisting, he's holding on pretty tight. I can tell he's not going to fly back. The other mistake that I see with handling is inconsistency. Now we talk about being inconsistent quite a bit. We talk about consistent inconsistency for stuff as far as when you feed and not building a routine that your bird has this really high expectation that you can't live up to day after day. However, when it comes to handling, that's one thing that you should always be really consistent about. So Tusa's coming back. I'm gonna make my hand the highest point. I'm gonna make it the most comfortable point to be, and that's why he doesn't wander around. So even though I do have his feet, I am not holding on super tight, keeping him there. There's no resistance. He's not trying to pull his feet out from under me. And if he was, I would know that there was something that he was uncomfortable with or a better place that he wanted to be, and I'd be able to accommodate that. You wanna go back to the tree? You wanna go back to the tree? Are you coming? You coming? Come on, Comet. Come on, Comet. You wanna come? Come on, Comet. Comet. Come on. Oh, good boy. Good job. You're joining. You're joining in on the video. Comet just wanted to demo that too. Um, so again, if you flight train your bird where you make your hand the most desirable, comfortable place to be, all the reinforcement comes when your bird is on your hand. For example, I'm gonna try to see if I can get Comet to wander a little bit. If I let go of Comet's feet and he starts to wander, all you have to do is place the reinforcement over here so that they walk themselves back to your hand and you can end up having the bird back on your hand again. Another thing that you can do is you can just switch hands and kind of do a little bit of a reset where you get your bird back to where you want it to be. Just remember to offer that reinforcement for, hey, thanks for the nice stepping up to my other hand, stepping back to this hand. Make sure that you're rewarding for really clean, awesome handling, especially if you're messing with it a little bit and you're currently inconsistent. Who is that? Yeah. Is that our little budgie? Is that our little budgie around the house? Do you want to go back to the stand? Good job, bud. Good job. <laughs> you know, you're like, hey man, I want to train on this too. All right. Are we getting a little, uh, we're getting a little brotherly competition over here. Who's coming? Who's coming? Thought it would be you. All right. Okay, so the other thing is being able to use both hands. I know, just get one hand down at a time, guys. Um, 
but you should be able to use both hands and this is just because sometimes in our house we're not always going to be ready for when our birds are coming and we need to be able to catch them with both hands and not end up with a bird on our head. So let's try this. So the other hand should look identical, it should look the same, okay? We should be able to hold our birds on both hands, not have them any hand specific. I do know of birds who have had specific injuries and prefer to step up on certain hands, and that is you know, really a case-by-case -case basis, but for your average bird, um, you should be able to use both hands, okay? So let's demo the left hand a little bit more. Comment, you look like you wanna play in this game. You're just showing them up, dude. You're showing them up. No, you're not going. All right. <laughs> you coming? Oh, Tuus, that was so rude. You know that Comet will need to come. Comet! Comet! Good boy. Good job. Good job, bud. Can go back? You can go. Ready to go. Good job. Tusa, can you do that? It's a little difficult. Short, come on. <laughs> Not quite. Not quite. Good boy. Good job, good job. All right, so I am now gonna show you guys what it looks like to set a bird on and off of stuff how you can do it really um, intention-based, whether you want your bird to step off of something with his foot or if you want him to step onto something with his beak. Sometimes we're nervous that a bird might bite us and so sending them off beak first <clears throat> is just kind of nice because you know that it's an incompatible behavior to be able to balance with their beak and not bite us at the same time. Okay, let's show them to So if I want him to step up, one foot, okay? If I'm going to set him down on something, I let go of one foot and then the other. And he knows that my intention was to put him down on that, okay? If I want to put him down beak first on something, I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Here we go. Beak first. Blueberry, <laughs> blueberry hanging out again. All right, let's try that again without blueberry interfering. So here's another example of the beak first. I'm making it most comfortable for him to grab with his beak. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys some more examples of putting a bird down where you want them to put their foot first. So here, I let go of the foot. It's very obvious I want him to go down foot first. I'm gonna show you again where I want him to go beak first. Good boy, bud. And that's where I'd wanna go beak first. And that might be a method that you use with a bird, again, like I said, where you're nervous that they might try to bite you or nip you. So knowing that their beak is occupied kinda of gives you a safety net. Good job. So I'm gonna show you with Tusa beak first. And it's almost making it so that their beak kind of helps them balance. <laughs> Comments like, let me demo this. Let me demo this, this is easy. All right, bud. Okay. I'm gonna show you on the counter with, with Comet. So if I want him to go down, foot first, letting go of a foot. Good job, bud. If I want him to come up, good boy. <laughs> Tusa just joined us. <laughs> and going down kind of beak first on a flat surface is a little bit more difficult. I feel like I've done it before, but hang on. Okay, come here. Yeah. There we go. Ooh. All right. So, yeah. I think the surface might be a little too slippery to go beak first, but beak first is best for in the cage or onto a tea stand or branch.
can kind of see what my body language is when I'm putting them on these stands and doing feet first versus beak first. I'm gonna show you what it looks like for, just so you can see what I'm doing. So feet first is kind of setting them above something so they can step up onto it or step down onto it. Beak first is gonna look more like they can go up onto it, climb up onto it, and their beak goes on first to kind of help them. All right, bud, I'm gonna show you with beak first. Yep, he's like, I don't wanna go. And then feet first, pretty much there. Do you wanna do it? Okay, before Tusa gets jealous. Are you jealous? Yeah, all right, so beak first. Climbing up onto something. You guys are like, where's my, where's my money? <coughs> yeah. And then foot first would look like this. Right? Where it's most convenient for them to step off with their feet instead of their beak. Okay? You guys good? You guys good on the handling? You guys good on the handling? <laughs> I feel like you're obsessive right now. So you just want to work. Well, I hope this video helped you, you guys. If it did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you guys still have some basic handling questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll maybe consider doing another video showing some more handling clarification. So, and thanks to my boys, Comment Tusa, for being such good helpers in this video. Well, <laughs> bye guys.